Welcome. Now that we're masters of magnetism, magnetic forces, magnetic fields, let's look at a very interesting case. We have here a conductor in a magnetic field pointing into page, and that conductor is moving. If that conductor is moving, the conductor is made of constituent atoms. So we can have electrons, and if this is a metal, electrons are what we want to look at because the electrons are allowed to move in a metal. And if we look at this, we know that we have a force from the magnetic field that is equal to QV cross B, or we can call it IDL cross B, depending on what we're looking at. So if this is an electron, then it's going to be negative Q. So QV is in this direction. B is pointing into page. And so our force is going to be downwards, so that we're going to have some force magnetic. Now, looking at this bar, if we have electrons feeling a negative force and they're allowed to move, but the protons are not, then we're only going to see electrons start to accumulate down at the bottom. But if we have electrons accumulating down at the bottom, then near the top where all the electrons are gone, now this is going to be a net positive region. So we're going to have a net positive region and a net negative region. And our electron is still feeling that magnetic force down. But in a conductor, because the electrons are so small and the force is so large in comparison to their mass, right, that they're eventually going to have to reach equilibrium, otherwise they're going to go everywhere that they want to. And what we can see is if we have a whole bunch of negative charges here and a whole bunch of positive charges here, an electron is actually going to be attracted to the positive charges, repulsed by the negative charges from the electric field. So we're going to have some electric force pushing up. And so we'll reach equilibrium because if we have any deviation from equilibrium, the electrons will very quickly move uh, to where they are needed and then re-reach equilibrium very soon. So we are saying the force electric QE minus the force magnetic QVB is equal to zero. So we can say that our electric field in magnitude is equal to V times B. We're going to call this an induced electric field. So because we have objects moving in a magnetic field, we get this induced electric field fairly quickly. So what can we do with this? Well. If we have these conductors that have this charge disparity, where we have all these positives on top, all these negatives on bottom, then we could run a conductor with some small amount of resistance. And if we do, right, the electrons inside the conductor are feeling an equilibrium here. But also, these positive charges are now attracted and will move along this conductor in a circuit to the negative. So we will have a current. So this is, right, motion in a magnetic field. can induce a current. Now, as I'm drawing up this magnetic field and providing all the details over here, just so we can see it one more time, is this infinite energy, free energy? Right? This thing's moving in a magnetic field. We just need to get a conductor in a magnetic field. We need some rails for it to slide along so that it can then create this current. And then we can have whatever this load is here getting free electrical energy forever. And you will probably say, no, there's got to be something else going on. Well, 
It turns out yes. So if we have this current here, then we're going to then have a current going through this here to replace all of this. And if we do that, then our force is IDL cross B. So we are going to have a force of IDL cross B gives us a force in this direction. So in fact, nature is going to correct for itself. That if we get some sort of energy, that energy has to right, come from somewhere. And it's coming from this bar slowing down. It's converting its kinetic energy into electrical energy. Well, what we could do is instead of letting it slow down and be a much, much tougher problem, we could have an applied force. So we can apply a force to keep it in constant velocity. Well, we know then that that force applied must be equal to ILB. And then the power required would be if the force applied times the velocity. So it would be ILB times the velocity. Well, what is I, the current? The current induced from this we know that delta V equals IR or that I is equal to delta V over R. We know that our E is equal to VB, so our delta V over L is equal to E. Therefore, delta V is equal to E times L. E is equal to VB, so we have V LB is our delta V. And so looking at this then, we have, right, I is delta V over R, so we have V LB over R times L times B times V. And so we get the power from the push must equal V squared L squared B squared over R. Now, the power from the electricity That power is equal to the current squared times the resistance. Well, we found what the current was. It's VLB over R. Quantity squared now times this R. So you get V squared, L squared, B squared over R. So what's nice is that the power from the push and the power from electricity are equal to each other. We're conserving energy. We're conserving power. But much more importantly than this, these induced quantities, this induced electric field, this induced current, this induced voltage, they are a way to generate electricity through mechanical means. So we're converting mechanical energy into electrical energy. And this is our, then our first example of a generator. So moving conductors in magnetic fields is a way to generate electrical current, electrical energy. And we'll look at more into this with all of these induced quantities.